Welcome back. We are on the War Thunder dev server and we're checking out the new ground forces that are coming in with the next update. So this beautiful monstrosity right here, don't worry, I'm sure by the time it reaches you in the game, it won't look quite like this. But this is Leopard 2A7V. It is a legendary platform that we've been waiting for in-game for some time now, and here it is. So this is my first time looking at it. Let's see, 652 on the DM-53. And let's check out that gun, the Ryan Mattel 120 L55A1. I believe that's the same cannon that we have in the 2A6. And the L55, so... Maybe slightly different. 652 mils of pen, though, so... Should perform pretty much the same. I think this said it was the A1, right? Yeah, the A1. So, similar, but just a teensy bit different. Still, same ammo, same pen. It does, however, get the DM-11 shell, which... Should be pretty nice. There's definitely situations with people hiding behind hills, or with helicopters, for example, where one of these timed fuse shells can absolutely annihilate them. Let's see, it gets some mine protection. I'm curious what that actually includes. If it's just a plate underneath the tank, I'm really not all that worried, but you never know. Maybe one day we'll get landmines in game and actually have to worry about such things. For the moment, though, that's just an enlisted problem. But yeah, it looks like it should be a sweet tank. It does have separate ammo storage up here behind a blast door, but it still has the leopard hull armor, or hull ammo, so you might want to limit the number of shells that you bring, but if you've played a leopard 2 variant before, this looks like it's just going to be a spicier leopard 2. Let's see, we have 2032 horsepower at 2600, and let's look at the 2A6 about the same horsepower and it looks at least on the outside like the armor layout should be pretty similar it doesn't look like we're getting the same style of upgrades on the armor that say the 2 PSO gets which I've been meaning to grind out but to be honest it doesn't excite me that much. Not like the 2A7 does. The 2A7 I've been waiting for forever. Um, does it tell us? It does not. I'm not sure what generation of thermals it gets. I'm going to assume that it's third generation, but it might be second generation. Either way, any level of thermals is fantastic, so... I'm happy with that. Now, its cousin over here, the STRV-122B+, is probably the more exciting of the two to get. It's getting, uh... You know, I would love to know what the actual pronunciation for that is. I just call it Slipper J. Whenever I get shot by any of the Swedish rounds. But, 589, so not terrible. Not quite as much as its German counterpart, but... What you're getting instead is this fantastic wraparound armor that's going all the way down your entire turret. So your heat protection and your ATGM protection going down the sides of this turret should be phenomenal. Interestingly enough though, I don't believe it has a raisable periscope. Shame. The other one, I think it's the PLSS that has it. Yeah, it's got its little periscope up there. Still, I'd be willing to give up the periscope to have this wraparound armor. I'm curious to see how well it performs. Let's see. So, this is still going to be able to go through, so maybe it'll help against the helicopters. Maybe it's just adding extra weight. Also, this is the dev server, so some things may not be entirely finished being implemented. But that does not bode super well for having all this extra add-on armor. My first look at it, I assumed it was going to be phenomenal. 
just because it has all this extra armor, but then again, I also look at the British tanks and often think, wow, those look cool, and then get disappointed by their performance. So, go figure. Either way, I'm sure it'll be nice for the Sweden mains out there to add one more STRV-122 to their top-tier collection, and I'm sure it'll help round out their high-end lineup, which is looking pretty spicy. Throw a 2A6 and three 122s on, and that's your first four slots taken care of. Throw on Gripen, maybe, and if you're me, probably the MI-28, but you could throw on the Apache. And whichever is your favorite of the AA vehicles and various Swedish light tanks, and I think you have a fantastic lineup. Sweden really is, in my opinion, one of the best nations in the game. I think they have some of the most interesting vehicles and potentially some of the most competitive lineups for a nation that's considered a minor. In a lot of ways, I think they're every bit as strong as the majors. They just lack a little bit in their cast potential, but with Gripen, their top tier cast should be phenomenal. Then over to China, we have the VTB4 coming off the experimental and export line. I haven't really looked at it too much, but it looks pretty similar to most of the other Chinese MBTs, and the T-72s for that matter. You've got your carousel. You do have this, this uh, machine gun up on the roof. Let's see, what kind of ammo are we working with? 577, plus we've got a tandem heat ATGM, so nothing to shrug at. It should perform pretty well, plus it's got ERA blocks on the front of the hull. It's got kind of a small plate here that it looks like you can sneak under, and you might even be able to sneak over. I'd have to shoot at it a bit. Um, let's see, America, SEP. Let's see, can blow through there. Can we sneak through up here? Well, we can, but that didn't look like it did too much. Looks like we might be able to go through the turret, so... Like a lot of the tanks at top tier, you're going to want to rely on its shorter silhouette and its ability to conceal itself more than its armor itself. But it should still be a pretty nice vehicle. 78 kilometers an hour top speed. I'm curious how the acceleration will be. Um, do we have a weight? 52 tons with 2,500 horsepower, so not, not terrible. I'm sure it'll have some pickup and go. It should still be nice to get another addition to top tier China. I'm working my way there soon enough. Admittedly, I need to start going down this line on the left since now that they've moved some of the um, communist Chinese vehicles over there, it's become a much more interesting line to me. Before I was pushing over here, and the ZTZ-99 is a fine vehicle, but I think these are more what I'm interested in these days. But we'll get there. I don't believe Japan... Oh, no, Japan does. They have the Type 99. So, we're getting another artillery piece little bit tall and boxy. Nice long gun. Should be similar to the Vidar. Uh, does not look like it has thermals, just night vision. And I don't see anything on here for a laser rangefinder, so it, it actually may not quite be like the Vidar, maybe more like the Paladin in the M109s. Uh, let's see. It's got a proxy fuse shell and... What's the speed? 940 meters per second, so this will be a pretty spicy shot. 940 on this one as well. Yeah, so it'll be usable. As long as your shells aren't too slow on artillery pieces, they're usually pretty usable. And it's coming in at 7.0, so... It'll be respectable. It'll play against a lot of things that are pretty thinly armored, so... I'm sure it'll be able to absolutely slap. And what's that on the roof there? Looks like a 50 cal. So it should also be able to deal with some of the light tanks that'll be harassing it. And its armor 
pretty thin. 21, 26, 25, 39 over here. Oh, that's it's effective. My bad. It's 20 millimeters pretty much everywhere, so... If you sneeze at it, it will explode. Then, as far as Britain's concerned, the Challenger 3P looks like it's going to be very interesting. Getting a smooth bore with uh, Britain is new. Even in real life, I'm pretty sure they haven't completely rolled these out yet. DM53 for 652 mils of pen looks very spicy. Similar ammo, though, to the Leopards, so... If you've driven the Leopard 2A6, or if you're planning on driving the 2A7, you'll be very familiar with the gun and the ammo. 66 kilometers an hour with 2,325 horsepower and 66 tons. So, still a chubby tank. Here's to hoping it gets some sort of in-theater armor package or something that it can slap on the front plate here because otherwise my experience driving the other challengers has been anything that looks at the front of you says bye bye delete and you are back to the hangar so as much as it'll be nice to get a new gun let me look at the 2e the 2e is renowned for its mobility see this one can go 80 kilometers an hour i'm a little bit concerned that the 3P will be dead on arrival just because challengers notoriously look cool but turn into smoldering wrecks as soon as something shoots at them due to their ineffective armor. It's just an example of real life doctrine not turning over real well to a video game. In a world where you don't have to worry about reliability and you're more or less always on the attack, having a defensively focused tank that intends to be hauled down, and dealing with opponents that never have breakdowns can put you at a bit of a disadvantage. Still, the gun will be perfectly adequate, so as long as you get the drop on the enemy before they see you, you'll definitely take them apart. The optics look interesting. I'm sure it'll have Gen 3 thermals being brand new in the real world, so I'm sure it'll have all the bells and whistles. I think personally I'd still rather drive the Black Knight or the 2E, which is what I'm currently working on, but nonetheless, I'm sure it'll be a nice vehicle, if nothing else. And that brings us over to the 2 OES, which I understand is very similar to the TESS. If you're grinding out Britain, I'm sure this will be a phenomenal pickup. If nothing else, it has a camo net, and as everybody knows, camo nets are 10 out of 10, bang on, best vehicles in the game. They have the best drip. They are the sexiest vehicles. And this one is no exception. You've got your uh, pizza dinner plate. Uh, see, I went to high school in the Midwest, and when we got pizza they always had these little plastic tables that would prop up the box and that's what these little satellite uplinks remind me of every time I see one on a British tank but other than that I'm sure this probably is the same ERA that's on the test let's see 400 mils and 30 kinetic let's go look at the tests Thirty kinetic and four hundred, and let's look at our engine. I'm pretty sure mine isn't fully upgraded, so this is probably a bad comparison. But this is the Perkins CV126A, and let's look here. This is the Perkins CV126A, so same engine. So, if you've driven the tests, this should basically perform the same. If you haven't. The only thing that I can tell you about British tanks is that they notoriously do not have armor that stands up to being shot at. They look thick and chonky. They are sexy as all get out from the from the outside. But every time something shoots at me, it usually ends up in a one-click adventure, sending me straight back to the hangar. I mean, of course, I have respawns, and I'll, you know, play through all my spawns, but by and large... British tanks rely on getting the first shot off and having a quick follow-up shot. They do have fantastic first-stage ammo reloading. 
but they don't really stand up to getting shot at. So, hopefully, this will be a good premium. Personally, I think if you're grinding out Britain, you might be better served picking up the Challenger DS and the Bishma, and then throwing on a plane with them. Um, if you can get to the Harrier, the Jaguar, those are probably your best options for planes. The premium Harrier's alright. Uh, if it had flares, it would be pretty nice. I don't believe they're selling them anymore, but the G-Lynx is also a fantastic counterpart to them. But the OES, I would, I would caution against picking it up right away if you don't have anything to run with it, because as things stand right now, you can bring the DS as a backup to it, or you can bring the Bishma as a backup to it, and you can absolutely make that work. It's about a one full BR gap, so... I mean, I run one BR lower backups all the time. It's just not going to be the most competitive thing. And depending on the matching that you, you get into, it, it, it'll do alright, but it could be a little bit rough. It is similar to just getting a normal up tier, though, in these, so... It, it's doable. If you really wanted to shell out and get a spicy lineup, I suppose your best bet would be to get all three and put a talisman on the Bishma and call it a day. Um, I have a lot of work to do in my British tree, but this probably would help. I would consider picking it up, but I already have three challengers, and to be honest, I don't know how many MBTs you actually need. I mean... With Russia, I absolutely have brought out lineups before where I've had the BVM, the UK, the UM2, the B3, the T80U, and the T90, and I've, I've definitely had games where I've spawned in all of them, where every life I go out and I get, like, two kills or whatever. So, it, it's doable, but in most average games, I'm probably going to do just fine with the three that I have. And I don't have too much further to go, at least with the MBTs in the tree. And I've got plenty of other stuff. So personally, I think the Challenger 2 isn't quite for me. But I can absolutely see why for some people it would be. And going forward in the next several patches, maybe we'll see it get something else, either as a squadron vehicle or as another premium that'll pair nicely with it. But to each his own. Moving on to Russia... We have the legendary T90M, and it looks fantastic. I'm looking forward to getting it and putting the darker camo on it, so it looks a little bit more like its real-life counterpart. And it does have this lovely 12.7mm machine gun on the roof. It sounds absolutely menacing. I took it out for a test drive earlier. And I do like the, the netting that hangs around the turret. It is a very good-looking tank. It is a very cool tank. It actually reminds me a lot of a crossover between the traditional uh, T-72, T-80 look and some of the looks that you see on the Chinese MBTs. So it's a really interesting-looking tank. We'll pull this one out for a test drive. And then I actually might go back and test drive the uh, British one as well, just to show it off. But one of the things that really stood out to me about this particular tank is how much acceleration you have for a tank that's got a diesel engine that doesn't have a turbine. It really does just get up and go. We're already at 40 kilometers an hour and we haven't even hit the water. And boom, just like that, reliable Russian heat blowing straight through the front of that poor little leopard. Now, we have our Gen 3 thermals, we have our laser range finder, and we have our target destroyed. We even have our little ejection port on the roof. Isn't that fantastic? And like I said, we have this absolutely menacing sounding machine gun on the roof that hangs that up there with our commander's optics. And, uh, yeah, it's a cool tank. We are zooming. 
Now watch me drift. Now watch me whiff my shot. <laughs> Still, it does have some hiccup. And let's go over here to some of this rougher terrain and see how we do with that. I'm sure it will do just fine though. Normally Russian tanks do. See, we can even accelerate through that. Going up, no problem. It does lose a little bit of speed turning, as all tanks do, but... To be honest, I think its performance is just fine. Now here comes the real metric. Yep, still that same terrible T-72 reverse gear. It is a good looking tank, even if it can't back up. I can't wait to get this on my Russian lineup. It'll be the perfect partner to the T-80 BVM. The T-72 B3 is nice and all, but it doesn't quite have the same look as this or the T-80. I'm most curious to see if we end up getting uh, the T-80 that was data mined last update as a premium for Russia. I do think it's interesting that America and Britain are getting premiums, and this is only the first dev server, I expect we'll have at least one more. It would not surprise me if Germany or Russia were to get one, but hey, that might come in the first patch of next year, or in the middle of next year. Who can tell? But. It would not surprise me if Germany and Russia got new premiums heading into the Christmas time period with all the uh, gifts that'll be going around. Some people I'm sure would love to receive a tank in War Thunder. If it's anything like me when I was a teenager, get lots of gift cards and checks and whatnot and I'm sure that I would have been all over picking up a brand new premium after Christmas, so we'll see. We'll test drive the Challenger 2 as well. I expect it should feel pretty much the same as the test since it looks almost identical to the test and has basically the same internals. By comparison to the T90 we just drove, you can look at how this thing just crawls forward. It's not super fast, but it does have absolutely fantastic thermals. And it does have a respectable shell. And of course, as any top tier tank should, a laser rangefinder. To be honest, I should be more excited for this, and if this tank came out six months ago, back before I ground out my British MBTs, I would have been all over this. I would have picked this up in a heartbeat, but as it stands, it's in a very similar position for me as the M1 Abrams is in that I have enough of the tech tree that I don't get a ton of value out of it, but I can see how it would be valuable for other people and just for coolness factor or just for having another vehicle that can bring in silver. It might be worth picking up. Admittedly, if they do end up coming out with one for Russia, even though my Russian lineup is more, or my Russian tech tree is more progressed than the others, there's a pretty good chance that I would be willing to get uh, a Russian one if it comes out. I would absolutely get a German one if it came out as well, but that's in part because I think Germany has a little bit less depth than other nations and I kind of need to catch up on my Germans. I don't believe they've... Oh, no, they did actually, didn't they? Looks like we're getting a tow launcher for Israel. Just looks like a normal tow, and they are adding new tow sites with the coming update, so I'm sure that this will take advantage of the er, new ATGM sites, so I'm sure that'll take advantage of it. 
and it looks like we've renamed the Paladin for them. I love that the Israeli vehicles get domestic names. It makes them interesting. So far, I don't think there's any... Oh, there's the truck for France. I used to love the AA truck for France that only was a single 40 mil. This is a good looking truck, to be honest. Like most trucks, I can't look in front of it. Let's see. Can I hit you? I'm not a good anti-air player. I can hit you. Let's get across the water and see if we can't put some pain down on these fellers. It took us a little bit longer than I would have liked for a 40 mil to take out a Panzer II, but it is what it is. Let's see. Yeah, we can't look down too far, but it's got a lot of fire rate. I think if you're sitting and you're waiting for somebody, you probably can pop them, but... <coughs> Probably not the best AA to rely on killing tanks in. Still, he's a good looking truck. He's 5.0 though, so you'll still fight some things that are thin enough, but probably not too many. And I do believe that that's going to be it. So it looks like we're getting some awesome vehicles in the coming update. Stay tuned for more uh, dev servers coming out in the next week. I'm sure that there will be tons of dev blogs coming out. Even if this is all we get for the winter update, this is already looking to be a jam-packed update. We have all sorts of new planes coming in. We have rank 8 coming in for ground vehicles. We have two new ground premiums that look like they're very promising, even if they don't personally appeal to me. Got Santa riding by in the background. <laughs> Hopefully he'll treat everybody here nicely this year. But yeah, like, comment, share, all the normal YouTube things. Let me know which of the tanks you're most looking forward to. For me, it's definitely the T90. I've been looking forward to the T90 ever since the event for April Fool's back in the day. I think if I had more of the Chinese texture, I'd probably be looking forward to that one as well. Same with Sweden. But, uh, to be fair, the American tank is also going to be pretty cool. My first two that I'm going to end up getting are going to be the T90 and the SEP V2 for America. And then I'll probably get caught up on Germany. But, yeah, looks cool. Very exciting. Well, hopefully you're all ex as excited for the patch as I am. So get out there, win your games, get your grind on, and get ready because we're getting a sweet new patch. <laughs>